Hey guys, and welcome to the vlog. Hey guys, so as I said, it is a new vlog, the second vlog of 2024. Look how blonde I look in this lighting. Crazy, and I think different colors just make you look different. I'm wearing olive green today, army green. I don't know. Somebody just rang the doorbell. I think I locked my dad out. Hold on. Okay, I came back from my walk before my dad did, and I accidentally locked him out. So that is who rang the doorbell. And we're gonna talk about what I'm reading. I don't know what I what kind of tangent I was going on before that, but for my okay, we need to talk about my short story collection first. So I'm still reading Wilderness Tells 40 Stories of the North American Wild by Diana Fuss. I'm gonna be reading this for like the next month and a half to let y'all know because there's over 40 some stories in here. So it's gonna take me at least 40 days, but I know it's gonna be I don't know, but at least 40 days. And because I read a story a day. We're on a new section in here called do to do women and panthers which i thought was odd because our first one was all about like the terrors of the wild which seems very common women and panthers so this is mainly because this theme in literature started in um the early days of america like you know the 19th century was when i think the story that i just read was published there was a lot of unknowns about what was in the American wilderness because it was still so new and they a lot of times so it, let's go to the 1700s they were scared of Native Americans in these forests and so in books or in, in stories instead of stories saying Native Americans they would say a panther instead or a cougar bobcat whatever they so they would say some kind of animal and then once um there came more people to America in time advance. It was escaped slaves living in the woods. They would call them panthers and stories and stuff straight up saying those people in the woods. Um, so that is why, so they were scared that black uh, men or Native American men would take white women and do whatever to them. And so they just used a, is it metaphor? No. I don't know how would you say instead of saying black man or native american man they just said a panther which i ha would have never thought of because i think it makes sense to be scared of panthers in the woods um i personally have never seen a live wild panther i've seen a dead one um at the side of the road somewhere between uh titusville and um kissimmee florida I saw a dead one at the side of the road. Um, but I do know a lot of people who um, are not personally know who claim to have seen panthers, like black panthers in the woods of the Carolinas or in the marshlands. I personally have never seen one. And then um, I have seen bobcats, dead bobcats. But um, yeah, so I would think it would make sense just to have it being a fear of a wild animal. But by the what Diana Fuss wrote is that it is escaped slaves or Native Americans who are these fearful things um, in the woods. I heard one story in there. It was by the man who wrote The Last of the Mohicans about these two women going out in the wild with their dog and they come across a panther. So that's where I am in there. And then I did start Convergence yesterday because I am a book behind on my Goodreads challenge. So I am, I only focused all my um, TBR picks over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, because I wanted to get back on track and I am still not back on track, but um, I am closer than I was. So this is Convergence by Zareda Cordova and I have no strong feeling towards this whatsoever. So it's like a two star. Um, let's read y'all the description. So this is the next adventure in the higher Republic begins with a story set generations before Light of the Jedi. In an age of exploration, Jedi travel the galaxy, expanding their understanding of the Force and all the worlds and beings connected by it. Meanwhile, the Republic, led by its two chancellors, work to unite worlds in an ever-growing community among near-distant stars. So we see that right off the bat, that um, there's Jedi who are... They go to d different temples and all um, throughout the galaxy. 
So on the close orbiting planets of Iram and Arona, the growing pains of a galaxy with limited resources but unlimited ambition are felt keenly. The two worlds hatred for each other has fueled half a decade of escalating conflict and now threatens to consume surrounding systems. The last hope for peace emerges when heirs from the planet's royal families plan to marry. So I thought that was already set in stone, that that was when we got into the book, we we're going to be, they would already be engaged. But no, that does not happen till 40% of the way into the book. So the whole time I'm like, I thought these two were engaged, but they're not. They're enemies. So I don't know why they're telling us a plot point that is so far into the book. And I'm still not sure why these two planets hate each other. Yes, they are neighbors. And we see that frequently in the real world of countries being neighbors and hating each other. But there's obviously a lot of times it's because colonialism or something like that. But no, I don't know why they hate each other. And again, I'm over halfway into the book at this point. So before lasting peace can be established, an assassination attempt targeting the couple tilts Irem and Arona back into all-out war. To save both worlds, Jedi Knight Jayla Natai volunteers to, under to undercover the culprit, while Chancellor Kyung appoints her own son, Axel Greylark, who he's my favorite character, um, and really the only character that I have any sort of feeling towards, um, to represent the Republic's interest in the investigation. But Axel's deep distrust of the Jedi I don't know why he distrusts the Jedi, but sparks against Gala's faith in the Force. She's never met such a puffed up, privileged party boy, and he never and he's never met a more self-serious, relentless do-gooder. The more they work to untangle the shadowy web in the investigation, the most complicated the conspiracy appears to be. Um, with accusations flying and potential enemies in every shadow, the pair will have to work together to have um, any hope in bringing the truth to light and saving both worlds. It's nothing. <laughs> That's synopsis. Because the Axel's only had like two chapters so far in the story. So my mood reading pick is still Mary Jane. As I said, I didn't read it all weekend. Yeah, not really liking this either. It's very commercial. It's just fine. And lastly, I did still pick up a chapter every day in A Breath of Snow and Ashes. This is the sixth book in the Outlander series. It's really focusing on um, kicking off the American Revolution. So I will get back to reading in about an hour. I think I'm going to probably start, I'm gonna edit some TikToks and later tonight edit my sit down video of the week, which is my best books of 2023. But I did want to start out the vlog. Update time for Convergence. I do need to put when I'm vlogging so I, don't tell y'all the same stuff tomorrow that I'm going to tell y'all now. I meant to do this before I turn the camera. So this is definitely a two star category and the only reason I'm not DNFing is because this is a series of Star Wars, you know, series. And I read the books in chronological order of when they take place in the in the universe, not in publication order. Um yeah. <laughs> and this is still does come before the other high, actually I don't know. No, in publication order. So I'm wondering if I read this in publication order, if it would be better, but there's just so many books and they're set all over the place. I feel like it'd be very difficult to read them in publication order. And to let y'all know, I definitely prefer the books that came out before the Disney stuff because this is in the Disney universe. Um, one thing is there's so many characters and there's no character list. Usually in the books that came out before Star Wars and Disney came together, there would be a list of the, of the characters, what their job is, and what kind of species they are. Like they're a Wookiee, a human, whatever. And it would have all that. And this would benefit so much from having one of those. Because that's one of my issues is there are just way too many characters. But the first little um, chapter, chapter one, um, did a great job world building. Penicent, you could really feel the mood of this, of, um, not countries, of worlds, of planets that are at war with each other. You can just feel the anxiety, the tension. It did a great job of that. And then the, the other thing I was just saying, I'm assuming that person's the assassin because it's confusing out here. My next tab is a plot one and it's hard to follow and 
yeah so and then i was saying are they engaged like the summary said or are they just getting engaged i was really confused with that because i thought on the summary is what has already happened but no that stuff wasn't happening until over 100 pages into the book um yes yeah, so very hard to follow then i have a character tab and that's there are way too many characters presented here and presented too fast where they which ultimately means they're all very flat characters as i said i think axel is the best developed character he just has more emotional layers to him the others are very set in their way and set in stone with their one trait and then my random two from the day yoda got name dropped and i totally was not expecting that and the other is a quote so this was a love tab um they're talking about what it means to be a jedi so the next day i get i got hit right there gala tapped her nose eventually though so yes much of what jedi do is confront fear fill it conquer it except that except that it is a part of me like anything else and i think that's such a great quote obviously we're not jedis i mean you might be i don't know i'm not one personally but in life we can use my example last year i was terrified of going to the dentist i didn't go to the dentist for five years and i know people were judging me for that but i don't care so i finally got the urge i'm like i'm gonna do it i'm going to confront it so yes i did i went there and I went through all the emotions that came with it and I conquered it. I did my cleanings and everything. So, and that is something that I did and it has helped me as a person. It's made me more confident and yeah, I'm not extremely confident, but it's made me more confident than I was before. And I just think that's such a great motto in life. You need to confront your fears, fill them. You have to fill all those emotions. Don't hide your emotions and then you conquer it and that makes you who you are as a person and i thought that was just a great quote even like i'm telling you you can learn things from sci-fi novels so that's all in that one for the day I should finish it tomorrow again i probably would dnf if it wasn't in a series but since it is and i want to continue the series then i will begin into these two later tonight but i'm gonna go eat some dinner because i'm really Tuesday we're having the storm of the year so far you know there's these storms all the time where they're like it's a huge storm yeah but we the lights did just flicker but it's 68 degrees I don't care and that means tornadoes could happen like knock on wood knock on wood first I just I love warm weather so I'm happy about it but I have several packages so I have my book of the month that I got the other day this is from Collar Poppets Makeup. I have a big Amazon that is a gift for my dad for his birthday. So I'm not going to open that one, but I'm going to film a TikTok opening this book of the month. Should I do a TikTok for the Color Pop 2? Yeah. I got three books. So these books don't count towards how I'm only allowed to haul 11 books because they, they just don't. They don't. <laughs> The one that I chose for my book of the month though was this one, The Bullet Swallower by Elizabeth Gonzalez James. This does have some magical realism, which is the only thing I'm hesitant about this book, but it's a cosmic a cosmic debt generations in the making. So we're following multiple generations and kind of in the wild west Mexico, Texas, that area the magic stuff that's kind of scare me then this one was also an option that you could get this month and that is mercury by amy joe burns is it burns yes this is a roofing family 
Family's bonds of loyalty are tested when they uncover a long hidden secret at the heart of their blue collar town from Amy Jo Burns, author of the critically acclaimed novel Shiner, but it takes place in the 1990s and I'm only as nostalgic for those and I am always on the hunt for nostalgia. And then you all know I'm focusing on sci-fi this month so I did add a sci-fi book and this is The End of October by Lawrence Wright. This is a mysterious killer virus bringing the world to its knees because apparently I am into those kind of stories. This is such a random thing to say but this Colourpop packaging is so thick and nice like where did they get this? I want to use whatever this is. And it came all the way from California and shipped perfectly. So I got four lip colors. They came as a set and then a eyeshadow palette. So in the Amazon package, there was one thing for me, Bear Claws. I saw these on a vlog years ago. And now that I have a crock pot, I can definitely use these. Now, again, I am not, I don't have chicken to cook with, so I'm not using this yet. I'm making shrimp Alfredo today, but when I get chicken, this is going to be so nice and helpful to use. I finished Convergence and I'm giving it a two star, which is what I thought I would because it did nothing for me. I didn't have any strong feelings towards it whatsoever. So I'm opening this so I can tell y'all my wrap up by like the star rating stuff by Call Pal. So we're starting with characters. The characters I'm giving a three star because I did like Axel and he was really the only developed character. All the others are Jedi Knight. Our princess, our prince, they were all very set in their way. They didn't develop throughout the story. They were um, flat, no depth to them, one dimensional. Axel, he was at least questioning them, questioning where he was in his life, where he was going as a person. And he was very much up and down. There's characters, I think George R. R. Martin does a great job with this character journeys who they don't get that redemption arc but they went through a lot jamie lannisters who i'm thinking of a character like that atmosphere as i said the first chapter did very great at the world building and really setting the tone for this war that we're in the feelings of the citizens of these planets so world building i'm giving a three star i think um, the author did a good job with that. Writing overall, we're given a two star. There was one quote that I liked, but I had a really hard time following it. It was just fine average writing, but I had a hard time following the story. And also with characters, there were too many characters, and I think that's why um, there was a hard time developing the characters. Plot, I'm given a, a two star. We had our point A and our point B or Z, whatever you want to say, but we had our start and we had our finish and the author knew where she wanted the story to go, but it was, how are we getting there? Things were happening just for the sake of to have things happen. Yeah, <laughs> there wasn't really a lot of logic and I wasn't gripped by the plot twist or anything like that. So my intrigue was a two, my logic's a one because things were not happening for logic, they were happening for the sake of plot and enjoyment. As I said, this just felt like a two star for me. So I put that at a two star. So I ended up giving this a two out of five. I'm not unhauling since I did annotate it and I do need to put in here what I ended up ranking the book two out of five. I do write that in the books. That's what I'm doing. Um, my key to what the tabs are, like what color means what, and then the dates I read the book, and then my rating, and then I will stamp it that says the book belongs to me and all that stuff. But another Star Wars book done, and I do have the next book that I'm going to read, which again, if you were recommended this book, I don't remember the name. I might have it on the notes app in my phone, so I definitely will check. But if you recommended this book, thank you. I will be doing this as an ebook. The Mass Market paperback is over 500 pages. It doesn't look it, but as I said, I will be doing the ebook for this. This is a time travel book, but we will talk more about the details of that tomorrow. I do need to find out how many chapters I want to read a day and all that. And then here was the bookmark I used for convergence. It just says to be continued and it's a book of the month bookmark. And then I did read in here today, but um, we're not at a point of updating for that story yet. But I haven't written my review yet. I want to eat some dinner before y'all saw I made 
shrimp alfredo, shrimp linguine alfredo, whatever. I just threw in the sauce and noodles and y'all didn't see me throw the shrimp in but I did do the shrimp later because I was like, hmm, because I originally wanted to do chicken, but y'all know I couldn't find chicken at the grocery store. So it's like, what if I do shrimp? And this one I'm doing, I swallowed spit wrong, so I'm like about to go into a coughing fit. But yeah, so first I'm just going to find out how many pages I want to read in here, and then put this book away, and then go eat my dinner, and then write my review after that one. Jane update. I'm now over halfway into it and yes I'm still skimming. The character, the main character Mary Jane is really weird to me. I get being uh, curious about the world, about politics, about sex and all of that but the way it's written just makes me uncomfortable but other than that like I do like this found family thing we have going on. Atmosphere again. I feel like this could be any time before cell phones because I mean it even if reminiscent to the 2000s to me for my own childhood, just book set in summer, do that. <laughs> Writing, I don't like when people are yelling, this is swear words, but when it's in all caps, like, don't do that. But yeah, the, the writing other than that is fine. Um, plot, it's a very out there plot, but it's very much slice of life. Uh, commercial beach read it's a fine book but the, the character is just weird to me and I, I don't like that <laughs> I, I don't know what I'd nah, what would do it Ooh, a two we'll do the characters a two but yeah this book is another one that it feels like a two-star read don't know if it will be we'll just have to see and then I will get into Outlander after my bath I feel like it's all my teeth but I just got home for the day. I got home a little while ago. I went to Target and this is so far down. Like, <laughs> I'm joking. But I just got home and I didn't buy any books. Shout out to me. But earlier I really rearranged stuff. So y'all know I'm fingers crossed getting a storage unit. I've been being told for like uh, over a month now that I'm gonna get one and it hasn't happened let me open the door. But I had two really large totes in my room. I'm seeing like, okay. So I had two really large totes in my room that were filled with books that I just have nowhere to put. Honestly, I probably need a 10 more totes, like at least two more. <laughs> but I had those two of books in storage and they're books I'm really interested in reading but I just don't have anywhere to put this is Fred's first time seeing my room since I rearranged but um so I took those totes to the front of the house and I will be taking them to the storage unit which n next week or the next is when I'm getting it so in the coming weeks but I had to read so this is where the totes were so this is my trash bag of just cluttered trash that I'm getting out um like old makeup products that I'm not going to be using because I had makeup sitting on top of those totes but I brought my mirror in here because this mirror used to be in my studio which was my old bedroom but I had to move and all of that but um so I brought it in here and this, this is a much cleaner area there's not stacks of books I know the date is wrong because I do it that's the last day I finished a book so I brought my baskets so let me move my tripod because I did film a tiktok but these are these are just books again that didn't have room to put on a shelf anywhere then we have my tbr and these first few books and these are my mood reading books again trash and then oh these stuffed animals i have to do stuff with then this box is really annoying this felt bin that i just have blankets clothes it's annoying <laughs> and then this painting that used to be in my office my dad took it down because he put up a painting so it just ended up in my room i would like to hang stuff up on this wall here but i don't know um i can never get things straight on the wall they're only as crooked and i can so do like the nina riva pose here but you see all my trash in the background <laughs> but uh, so I want to do like a wall, um, a collage wall or whatever it's called. I don't know where you have a bunch of different like pictures, like different frames. But I don't, every time I hang stuff up, it's only crooked. 
And I don't think my dad will do it for me because he said, he's one of those people who says he'll do something that he never does. When I'm somebody, I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to effing do it. And that's how this mirror got in here. Because I randomly thought last night, I was like, let's get those toasts in my room and put the mirror in here. And so here we are. And where is Fred? Where did he go? <laughs> oh, he's in my bed. Okay, I see him. But the chair was blocking him. But yes, I have all this that I need to do stuff with. But I'm, oh yeah, I started a book. I started a new book today. We have to talk about that. We're moving to over here. Okay, Fred is trying to get warm because it is quite cold. And look at this sunset. Hold on. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, but I did start a book and I'm like 10% of the way into it. I haven't marked in the physical book where I'm at yet though, but why am I blurry? Like, hello. Hello, why am I blurry? It says spot focus. I don't know what that means. Do I click it? Okay, so I'm sorry if I was blurry a lot longer than I thought I was. But I started 1632 today. Somebody recommended me this book. I don't know who, but if it was you. I don't know if it was on Twitch or YouTube. But if you did, thank you. <laughs> um, so Freedom and Justice, American Style. 1632, and in Northern Germany, things couldn't get much worse. Famine, disease, religious war lay in waste to the cities. Only the aristocrats remained relatively unscathed. For the peasants, death was a mercy. 2,000 things are going okay in Grantville, West Virginia. And everybody attending the wedding of Mike Stern's sister, including the local chapter of the United Mine Workers of America, which Mike leads, is having a good time. Then everything changed. When death settles, Mike leads a group of armed miners to find out what happened and finds the road into town is cut as with a sword. On the other side, a scene out of hell. A man nailed to a farmhouse door. His wife and daughter attacked by men in stove vest, faced with this. <sighs> <laughs> Mike and his friends don't have to ask who to shoot. At that moment, Freedom and Justice Americans saw introduced to the middle of the 30 years war. Yes, so I'm about 10% into this. I am doing the ebook because when I bought this, I didn't know it was going to come in the mass market paperback and I struggle with mass market paperback. So I am reading this on my phone. And as I said, I'm about 10 or 11% of the way into the book. So I did want to let y'all know that I started this. And again, if you are the person who recommended it to me, thank you. And yeah, it's good so far. Um, I didn't know what to expect because time travel is only something so tricky. And this cover doesn't look too appealing to me, but this did publish in like 2005. And just covers have changed so much in nearly 20 years. But I am going to read a little bit now. It's 542. I know I'm picking it up early, but that's the thing with an ebook. You can just pick it up wherever, whenever, and do your thing. All right, guys, I am about to eat my dinner. Got some pizza. I made pizza. I didn't buy it. But I read 20 chapters in 1632, which is as many as I wanted to. So 203 pages. Look at me. Look at me. So this is like three star. Um range so that means it's a good book and I would still recommend it if you're interested in the genre and all of that or if you think the premise sounds interesting we'll go into my thoughts I'm this is like 30 something percent I don't remember the exact percentage number but characters I like the character of Rebecca she is a woman from 1632 she is Jewish the one that starts with an s I don't know how to pronounce it but like Spanish Jews that kind um and this is when the Inquisition is happening. Basically, if you're not Catholic, you're screwed. And so she was very scared um, coming across these American men and um, just the American culture and all of that because she didn't know they would be accepting of her being Jewish or not. But she's been my favorite. And with time travel, I've never read of somebody from the past coming to the future in, like, our world. I've seen people from our time going into the future, but you know, from the past coming to our modern time, I've never read that, which is hard to believe. I don't know why I've never read that. I've only just read about people from our time, or from modern times, going to the past. Um, so I do like her, but a lot of these male characters in West Virginia have been interchangeable for me. There's just a lot of them, and I'm like, this is too much. We get a lot of point of views of people from 1632, um, European people, but um, not a lot from the 
I guess it's 2000, I don't know what year we're in, but in the American part, because I know not all these people are coming together and being like, yep, we gotta fight the Germans or Catholics or whoever. Uh, uh, people, we don't all come together that easily. I'm sorry, but we don't. <laughs> Um, somebody's gonna be questioning it and all. So I just think there's some logic issues there. Atmosphere, yeah, I, I am having a hard time understanding this, the science, and I mean, the science fiction, this is a huge part, world building's a huge part. So a line has been drawn in the middle of the road is one side Germany and one side West Virginia. Like, so can these West Virginia people go to the rest of America? Like, I'm really confused by how that works. Writing is um, easy and accessible, fast to read. As I said, I write over 200 pages in one day. And then plot, intriguing plot. But again, I have a lot of questions. Hey guys, happy Thursday. Happy last day of this vlog. Just think you've almost made it through this whole video of me rambling. <laughs> no. But I do have some things to talk about. So first off, I did get this in the mail today. This is the second book to Convergence. It's by a different author. It's Lydia Kang. She wrote Cataclysm. I'm kind of shook that they take place in the same series following the same characters and changed authors. Back when um, the Star Wars books were with like Dark Horse I think but before they were Disney books that wouldn't happen. Like all the Raven books the same author Drew Carpenson he wrote all of those books even if they were within another series. Just it, that the author who wrote one set of characters would only try that set of characters. And I so I find it really fascinating that they changed. I've heard that it's, and when I've done writing groups in the past, a lot of people will not want to write characters that other people have already written. Um, I see this with, um, or a lot of people would be like, okay, that's cool. And then a few weeks later, they'd be like, no, can't do this. I hate it. <laughs> I am somebody who's a very set, in my ways like yeah I so when other people are not it kind of stresses me out but also I have more stuff to say about that that's when I've run in fan fiction in the past writing characters that are created by somebody else it, I do feel I have a struggle writing those canon characters I don't like to do it because I'm so scared of getting them wrong so I think it's really fascinating that they are doing different authors but I have heard this one is much better than Convergence. So hopefully that's true because y'all know I wasn't a huge fan of Convergence. And that book was like $15, which for a hardback, I feel like is decently priced. Then in Wilderness Tells, I did finish the Panther section, the Women and Panthers. My favorite story was actually a reread and that is The Midnight Zone by Lauren Groff, who y'all know is one of my favorite authors. This one was, it came out in 2016, was set in our modern time. So this story didn't particularly go into that race thing that the other stories did. This was more of a literal panther, not a panther that is actually a metaphor for a man. This one I just felt like was more of that desolate, you can't get any help vibe, even if it is set in our modern world in Florida. I just, I love those kind of stories of survivalism that you see a ton with Lauren Groff's writing. The Eyes of the Panther by Ambrose Beerus. I did like the vibe. It just gave me that scary horror vibe, very gothic feeling, but it was not my favorite in the collection, obviously. Then we had Circumstance by Harriet Prescott Spofford. This one, I honestly, I don't remember. It wasn't that memorable to me, and that's kind of funny as it looks like it's the longest one here. But... And then was the James Fenimore Cooper Panther Tell Was that the one singing to the panther? Because there was one where the... But I do think those two, the um, older ones in the story, are very reminiscent of this could be a man attacking a woman. Especially the one where the panther like ha has a grip on the woman. and She's between his jaws. And she's just singing the whole time and he's not doing anything. And obviously, I think y'all know a predator that is an animal is going to go right in and attack when a human has more layers to them in this kind of sense of is this right is this wrong should I be doing this that kind of thing when when it's an actual legit panther it doesn't care it just wants its next meal 
So we finished the women and panther section and tomorrow I will be starting the fire and ice section which I see we have a Jack London story starting us off. I recently learned that Jack London was extremely popular in the Soviet Union. People were asking what American authors were popular in the Soviet Union and he was one of them. Now I did get two random items that are not book related. So I got the ultimate bra from Skims and this bra is amazing. <laughs> I highly recommend it. I've, I mean, I've only tried it on the once, but I had been wanting it for so long. And then Corinne, she finally saw that one in stock. So thank you, Corinne. And I got it and it's beautiful. And then I did get my new sunglasses. They're Hailey Bieber times Vogue. I wear, so I don't know if that's Vogue as in the magazine Vogue, but that'd be kind of cool. I've really been wanting this style of sunglasses, this shape, and I actually got um, regular glasses from this line as well, but they haven't got here yet. So these glasses these i really like them and i have been wanting a smaller shape i used to have small shape oval ones which i loved when i was a kid and as a teenager but just now in my 20s they're not really the style i wanted i want more of a square but as you can see my regular glasses penny you don't need to jump down but these are very oversized and i felt like they just took up so much of my face so i wanted to go down to something smaller like with this you can even see my eyebrows so that is great I'm looking in the mirror yeah I really like these and they are a perfect fit I don't know I bought glasses recently that were not and I had to like deal with the glasses USA which was no pain whatsoever but obviously you'd rather your clothes and whatever fit but I am I have been reading some of 1632 today I've read about two chapters because it is an ebook but I am gonna go because my dog wants me to get her out of my bed and I don't want her to jump on her old 14 year old bones but I will see y'all later I read 192 pages in 1632 today and yeah this just isn't my kind of sci-fi I've never been an alt history person because I like things to be set in stone I don't like changing things and for time travel this I don't even know if you can start this time travel. I don't know. It's really weird. There's not a lot of explanation and that's one of the reasons why I'm struggling. This is a very long series though so I'm sure you get explanation at some point but if I'm not having a strong connection at this point over 300 and something page yeah basically 400 pages into it I don't want to continue the series but yeah it's not for me. I don't hate it though. It's fine. It's been a fine time reading, but there's just a lot of inconsistencies for me. So I probably won't be continuing this series. I will finish this book up tomorrow though, uh, because I mean, I'm this far into it. Why wouldn't I finish it? But yeah, so I will end up finishing it and because I want to write a review for it and because it was a book that was recommended to me by one of you guys, I feel obligated to write a review for it. But I am late for the hockey game. <laughs> so sleepy I don't well my dog woke me up she was barking 30 minutes earlier today um yeah I get woken up by my dog like every single day which is frustrating I'm like can you please not bark thanks but yeah so I haven't been sleeping that great lately I'm gonna do one more set of squats and then um heat up some dinner and watch the hockey game. Guys, it's time to end the vlog. You're seeing me after a shower, which is rare, you usually don't, but I finished Mary Jane. So I was not trying to finish tonight, but I was here during commercial breaks at the game because I was like, I want to be done with this book and start a new book, which I need to see what I'm going to be starting next. Oh, it's one that I am excited for. It's milk fed, but that'll be in the next vlog. <laughs> so Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. I don't know what I'm ranking or rating this yet. I haven't done the math because I was literally sit in my bathroom waiting for the water to get warm when I finished this. But characters, I don't think we're supposed to be on the parent side of this story, but I'm with the parents. <laughs> she should not be in a house where you have the this couple that's there for therapy for drug addiction, alcohol addiction, possibly sex addiction, um, where people are running around naked and just no, I don't think that is a good environment for a 14 year old girl to be in, but you know, I, it seems like we're supposed to think it's fine and that she shouldn't listen to her parents. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't think we're supposed to side with the parents, but I did. And I think this, 
um, was oddly sexual. Like there was a lot of sexual stuff, like a ton. And I get this as a 14 year old girl who at that age you are coming to terms with sexuality and um, what sex is and uh, just coming to terms with life. Like, as I said, the drugs and alcohol, you usually find out about what that stuff, I'm not saying you partake in it, but you usually find out what that stuff is around that age, which is completely normal. And it's completely normal for um, a person to be asking questions about sex and all. That's totally normal because this is usually when you learn about that in school and all. But when it's basically every other paragraph you're talking about boobs and penises, no, <laughs> I don't want to be reading that. It's just odd and made me uncomfortable. Atmosphere was very like nostalgic for those summers of when you're a kid, which I love. The writing was average. I didn't like when the characters were yelling. It would be in all caps. I just, that's something I just don't like seeing all caps on a page. It's not for me. Then the plot, this was very much slice of life. Um, great for like a beach read palette cleanser, which I have been reading a lot of really dense books. So this was good in that sense. So I'm going to say this isn't two star category, but you can check out my Goodreads, which I will have linked down below with what I end up ranking it. So the next book I'm starting is Milk Fed by Melissa Broder, which I've heard great things about. So that should be fun, but I'm ending the vlog here. If you made it all the way through, I was like, I don't want to hear about breast. Then we have like a whole nipple on the cover. <laughs> and stuff. Okay, but if you made it through this whole video, leave a hockey emoji in the comments below. And as always, comment, rate, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that notification bell to be notified when all my videos go live. If you would like to find me on any other social media, it is all linked down below. If you guys would like to check me out there, I usually post daily on all my social medias, but I'll see you in the next video. Bye!